Hi, I'm Dr. Brian Evans, and I'm a migratory bird ecologist at Smithsonian's National Zoo and Conservation Biology Institute. And I'm Erin Kendrick, clinical nutritionist here at the zoo. Today, we're gonna to show you guys how to make hummingbird nectar for your backyard. Fantastic, and we've got really awesome hummingbirds throughout North America. In Eastern North America, we have the ruby-throated hummingbird, but Western North America has a ton of different species. And these cool little guys migrate back and forth from Central America. We even have some hummingbirds here at the zoo. And we feed them a slightly different diet than we're going to show you guys today. Um, that's mostly because this is not a complete diet. This is only going to augment what they're feeding in the wild, which is on flower nectar and some insects, and potentially in some other regions, pollen. But today we're just doing sugar. So hummingbirds eat insects too? They do, they're actually pretty insectivorous. Wow, cool. Yeah, so today we're just gonna go through the simple process of mixing sugar and water to make a nectar for your backyard. We've got water, which is just regular tap water. You don't need to do anything special with that. It doesn't need to be filtered. You don't need to boil it. Just plain tap water um, at the room temperature. And then we've also got sugar. Right here is just plain table sugar. You don't need to use anything special. You know, some of the, the raw sugars or the brown sugars or even the uh, powdered sugars, they might have some additives into them that aren't necessary and could potentially gunk up your, your nectar a little bit and not be good for the birds. But the hummingbird nectar at the store is usually red. Right. And hummingbirds really are attracted to red. But if you look at the feeder we've got, it's red. And that's what they're attracted to. They can't see the nectar inside the flower. They're attracted to what's on the outside. So I shouldn't add the dye or food coloring or something no, like that? No, it's really too. not necessary. So go ahead and add our water in. All right. I'm a very slow water pourer. That's OK. <laughs> and to that, we're going to add sugar so that we're having a ratio of one part sugar to four parts water. It doesn't matter what parts you're using as long as it's that one to four. So one to four, and so why is that ratio really important? Uh, for a couple reasons. The nectar that they would be eating in the wild is gonna be pretty similar in sugar concentration to what we're making. Um, if it has too much sugar in it, you could actually cause some problems in the body. It could actually cause some dehydration. If it doesn't have enough sugar in there, uh, they're not going to be attracted to it. They can get more sugar by going to the flowers in your yard. So you wouldn't see the birds coming to your feeder. So you're going to stir this until you don't feel any of that grittiness anymore. It's definitely reduced. So we've got this sugar water. How long can it stay okay to drink for the hummingbird? And that's really going to depend on how hot it is outside. So we would say you definitely don't want to let it go more than two days. So you really want to be changing this and cleaning your feeder every other day in order to make sure that it's clean and safe for the birds that are eating from it. How do I clean it? Uh, well, if you bought one that is dishwasher safe, it can just go right into the dishwasher with your other dishes. Um, otherwise, just some warm water, a little bit of soap, um, like you would wash your own dishes in the sink. So how's this? Is this feeling less gritty now? No grit. I'm All pretty right. sure I am grit free. So that's it. Now we're ready to put it in the feeder. Okay. So I'll unscrew this feeder. I'll hold it steady. We're going to fill it all the way up to make sure it's got enough pressure to keep it from just draining out. All right, so screw this back on like so. Now we're going to turn it over and let it glug down. Yep, so that's filling up that bottom pan so that when the birds come to feed and stick their beaks in there, it's right there ready for them to slurp up. And their beaks are specially designed to dig into the flower and pull out the nectar, which is just really cool. So we've got this filled up and I imagine we're ready to go outside. Yep, ready to go. It was that simple. Where should we put this? Well, that could be a serious question. So one of the things that we want to make sure is that we, if we have multiple hummingbird feeders, we want to keep them pretty far apart. Because if we put them too close together, then the hummingbirds are going to get into fights. And they love to get into fights, dive bombing each other, even pecking at each other with their sharp little bills. So we want to avoid harming the hummingbirds when we feed them. Absolutely. There's a few other really important ways that we can feed hummingbirds safely. One is it's best to keep your feeder actually away from your window. Or if you have it close to your window, put decals on your window so the hummingbird can see it. Otherwise, the hummingbird might fly into your window, and collisions with windows are actually a big source of hummingbird mortality. Another big thing is 
What could be more fun to play with if you're an outdoor cat than a hummingbird? So if you have a cat that's outside or your neighbor has a cat that's outside or there's a stray cat in your neighborhood, don't give them a hummingbird to play with by putting up a feeder. Don't put up a feeder at all if you have outdoor cats. That's so important. So Brian, we know these birds are migratory. They're not here year round. No. When should we put this up? Definitely don't put it up in February, at least if you're in the northeastern US because we know there's not gonna be hummingbirds here yet. They come in the spring and after they come here, they especially want to have a quick treat and that's a great time to have your feeder up. So we have our nectar feeder filled. I think we're ready to go hang it up and see if we can attract some hummingbirds. Awesome, well thanks for joining us and have fun making hummingbird nectar at home. Let's go right, let's hang go. this up.